when Cody was growing up, he, he into everything, running all the time, just doing everything in the world, the light of our life. Cody was always fun, loved life, just a mischievous little boy, always getting into something. Cody was my first grandchild, my first grandson. My husband and I were so proud of him. Say so it wasn't like your typical big brother and little brother. We didn't ever we didn't ever fight. He was he was always more like a dad. When I was growing up, I started playing baseball when I was a young kid and played t-ball and all the way up through college. Quarterback of the football team. He was a leader. He always was a leader. He was uh, an outstanding baseball player, a catcher. I'd probably have a better chance of going to college if I tried to play baseball. So I tried out and received a college scholarship to play baseball at Henderson State. When he turned 21, he had always wanted to join the military. And with the baseball future really looking good, uh, something that we just tried to discourage and discourage and discourage. I just felt I'd always wanted to serve because my grandfather, he was in the Navy in the Korean War. And seeing him and what he went through back then and seeing all the Vietnam veterans that I had known growing up and hearing their stories and what they had been through just really give a strong urge for me to serve and do my part. He got so many of the Navy things that my husband had brought back and he was just always knowing about the Army. I've known Cody all of his life. He had a desire for the military and uh, scared his, pa his family to death. Cody, if you're going to consider joining the National Guard, why not my unit? And uh, you don't know anyone in any other other units, and uh, heck, I'd love to have you. Cody absolutely loved everything about the military. The old adage of join the Army and be all you can be, that was Cody Cup. You want me to go? Yeah, you go ahead. Okay. Um, you know, I had a crush on him when I was in the sixth grade. <laughs> yeah, sixth grade. So I didn't want to ask him if he would take me for a ride. He came up and asked me if I would go. He had a Harley, just gotten it. She got on the bike with me and uh, we come to the stop sign. And then when I got to the stop sign, I took off and pretty much gave it everything I had. And she was either going to fall off the bike or she was going to wrap her arms around me and hold on. So. She wrapped her arms around me and held on. And, um, she came in and said that she'd been on the motorcycle. And we weren't too excited about that. And then she said, um, when we asked her who she was with, she said Cody Cole. And then when she left the room, we both high-fived each other because we knew that this was a situation that was going to be okay. When we he was hooked. <laughs> I told all my friends like the next day that I was going to marry her. I locked my keys in my car in Ruston, which was two hours away, and he said he would come and bring me my spare set, and he asked me to marry him that night. <laughs> we only dated for two months before we got engaged, and nine months later we got married, and I, just, I was just ready to get married. I wanted to be with him. And Audrey always had a good time. When we get our time off, we ride the motorcycle a lot and cook food on the back porch. We were always smoking meat and cooking ribs and everything. I'm gonna put your hand on there. Cole's um, He's very fun. Energetic. Loves his dad. Wants to do everything with daddy. Kate is a mommy boy. He loves his mommy. This new baby, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. When he was uh, 16 days old, that's when I had to leave to go to Afghanistan. So it was tough knowing that day was coming that I was going to have to leave him. And then when he finally got there, you know, I had to leave when he was 16 days old. So it was it was real hard to leave Audrey with him. I'm not going to 
got a call that Cody was hurt. There's an area where we had um, been doing some construction for this village and uh, that's where we got hit by an IED. It was there in the ground where it had been freshly, you know, packed around and um, freshly dug in with the uh, construction crew they come through. So that's where they used the area to ambush us out there. And Nobody really had any answers, you know, how he was or where he was, when he would come home, if he would come home. I was just miserable waiting to know. We got the call that, it, that his armored vehicle had hit an ID. He said, Dad, they like to go, but I'm going to be okay. He said, we love you. If there's anything you can do, just, just let me know, son. I remember when Cody got hurt. His main concern was, was about his family. He got a he got a call through to us. It came through at three o'clock in the morning. He said, Grandpa, I'm in a bad shape. I don't know, I didn't eat, I didn't sleep. But just them, everybody being around and helping was really nice is what got me through. I remember one of the things that that he said was that he just hoped if anything happened that that he wouldn't lose his arms. He wanted to be able to hold Audrey and his son Cole. I remember just looking around and two of my guys were gone and I couldn't find them, you know, and I was just real confused. And I remember uh, waking up there and you know, I could just hear a lot of screaming and hollering. And I remember I was screaming and hollering. I remember looking down and <clears throat> I was bleeding pretty bad out of my legs, so I had to uh, put a tourniquet on my right leg and I couldn't get to my tourniquet because I was wedged in the vehicle so one of my soldiers it was a good friend of mine he came up and he said hey sir we're going to take care of you now just waiting to hear those rotor blades coming and so uh, he got got me my tourniquet and put it on my leg so it quit bleeding and then he handed me another one and I put it on my other leg and was good to go and then we started getting us out of vehicles and uh, taking care of the guys that were hurt worse than I was and I was just real confused and I looked up and my commander, he was there beside me in the truck and uh, he was unconscious and I just remember thinking, you know, what had happened and was it a training event or was it real? I just really didn't remember where I was at. I told my soldiers, I said, hey, y'all be careful. You know, I'll see you when you get back home. My little boy that was 16 days old, not to get to see me again. Nobody really had any answers, you know, how he was or where he was when he would come home, if he would come home. But I was just miserable waiting to know. They were able to fly me back home to get to uh, Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio. And that's where I got to see Audrey. <laughs> And to see Cole, man, it was like the best thing in the world to see her and Cole. And she was holding him, and he was just a little fat baby, and, and he came right to me and held me like he'd never miss me a beat. Uh, the next few months were weird. He went from being what I thought was completely perfect to be broken and I had to. Being honest, it's uh, it's tough. Uh, there's a lot of things that she needs help with that I can't help her with a lot of times. And, uh, uh took for granted the little things that he used to do, like standing on a ladder, changing a light bulb, and taking out trash, and just doing manly things around the house, because then I had to do it. And I think about, you know, Cody saying to me one time, 
you know, mom, a lot of the, a lot of my, my buddies, you know, their wives didn't stick with them. And, um, she was an amazing young woman. She is strong and, um, just, they've been in this together. I'm so proud to have her as my wife. What she's doing for me and our babies has just been great. I couldn't ask for a better wife. Then he's pretty much good to go, do whatever he needs to do for a short period of time, and he has to rest because he's tired and his legs hurt, so we just have to take it step by step. I got to know Cody through his injuries. You never hear him complain. And I think that's the thing that, that, that attracts me to Cody more than, more than anything else. If you need help, you should be able to ask for help and get help. That we're here. There are people here that want to help them. It might take years for a person to get the, either the help they need uh, physically or whether it's something to make their house accessible or whatever. It could take years sometimes. The bureaucracy, the bullshit, the just I don't know why it doesn't get done starts to set in. And you know, they have to keep going and keep going and keep going to get it. They never can get help. They just give up on it because they're tired of dealing with it. They, and you just get so frustrated. There's an alarming rate of suicide in veterans at one every 65 minutes takes their own life. It's so hard. To me, it just needs to be something on a small level where I can talk to so-and-so and he can say, you know what, Cody, I'm going to find some way to help you out. Or I can say, hey, I'm going to help you out some way, you know. Not just the soldier, the soldier's family, the wife, the children. We can make a difference one wounded warrior at a time. Become involved in Operation Saw and help us help others in Arkansas. We're here to improve the lives of Arkansas wounded warriors. With your help, we can do that.